complete rehaul on my skincare. My skin has been freaking out so much lately and I don't know what it is. And whenever it gets like that, I just feel the need to get new skincare. The skincare I was using, I just feel like it wasn't being effective anymore. It's like I would do my skincare morning or night and then either throughout the day or when I wake up the next morning, I would just end up having a new blemish on my face. So I feel like maybe some portion of it is skincare related, but I digress. I wanted to get new skincare anyways and then I also wanted to like really focus on addressing my melasma apart from my prescription treatment that I use well pretty badly I try to use it once a week but really it's probably like once every couple weeks because every time I do use it it does cause my face to peel which I'm dealing with right now so my face might look a little bit red on camera it doesn't look too red in person though but I wasn't using anything else and part of that is because every single product I came across that treats melasma or helps like hyperpigmentation the ingredients all suck in it to be honest it either isn't effective it doesn't work or that just like it's paired with ingredients that I just feel like are really poor it's gonna cause like irritation for my skin but I was determined and so yeah I found some new products and I am so, so, so happy with my new routine. I also introduced skin cycling into my routine, which if you're not familiar with it, maybe I can speak to it at another time, but it's alternating products to improve your skin quality. And it's mostly involving like three to four steps of like step one, one night you're focused on exfoliation, the next night you're focused on retinoids, and then the third and the fourth night you're focused on like hydration, and then you just kind of like repeat this cycle. It's pretty cool. I love it and I've been doing it for the past couple weeks so if you're interested in me talking about it more I can absolutely dive into it. But let's talk and do because I don't want my skin to like get too dry here. So I'm gonna go on with toner for a second. And the toner that I have been using is a brightening pigment tonic. So it specifically targets hyperpigmentation. It's gentle enough to use twice a day. So that has been like my primary toner. And I feel like it's really nice to have a toner that focuses on like addressing a concern. I'm just gonna apply this all over. And you wanna like really get your toner into your skin here. Don't just like quickly brush it on. My morning skincare though is very simple. Simple is key, simple is best, especially for the morning. The nighttime is like when I go in with my treatments and mostly do like the skin cycling and stuff like that. You guys, I have just been like loving this routine. Like I've always loved skincare and it always brings me happiness, but like more so than before, like this is the time of my day, twice a day, that I just like look forward to the most. So I love that I like refound joy in this process, you know? And like I said, morning, simple. So I'm only gonna go in with like three other products. And then next up, I'm gonna go in with this hydrating serum. It's from Botnia. One pump will do ya, that's for sure. So most of my products are from Botnia Skincare. I discovered them and I am so obsessed and so in love, you guys. Next, I'm gonna go in with this rose water toner. Let it soak in a little bit. And then to my surprise, I'm actually going in with an oil. You guys, I have combo oily skin. This used to be unheard of for me. <laughs> I'm mostly gonna focus this on some of the areas that I'm breaking out. So the areas that I'm breaking out is all old breakouts. I haven't had like a new breakout in the last couple of weeks, which has been amazing. But it's just taken a long time for some of the old spots to go away. I'll apply a little SPF in a second once this kind of like dries down a little. So Botnia, it is like a small company. It's based in California. And what I love about them is that they make 100% of their own products and ingredients in-house in small batches. So it's like controlled, it's high quality ingredients. All of their formulations are high quality and also like limited ingredient formulations too, which is key. I hate when you get like a skincare product or any product and like the ingredient list is like a mile long. Like why? Why do you need that? And they're also organic skincare, which is a new thing for me and my skin is just soaking it up loving it so much this is not sponsored at all i'm just so genuinely obsessed like my skin feels so plump so hydrated like it has like a natural glow to it i'm starting to see like some lightning overall especially like pairing it with this wave device which i can talk about at a later time too oh you guys i'm so 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 happy with this so yeah i just wanted to share like my new 
skincare routine. I'll have to dive into my nighttime skincare routine maybe in my next video. That one is like a little bit more detailed obviously because of the skin cycling. But essentially like when I say like night one, and that can be any day of the week that you choose, is exfoliation. That's either going in with a chemical or a physical exfoliant and that can be whatever you're choosing. So like for instance, I can go in with this BHA liquid exfoliant from a Paula's Choice which is really good or maybe I want to go in with some enzymes and just do like a face wash or I can use this as like a mask treatment. I also have another enzyme product that I can use as like a mask product. And then retinoids, it can be my prescription thing for my like melasma. It can be actual like retinol. It can, it can be tretinoin for instance. And then like your soothing, hydrating days, it can be like a soothing mask, calming mask. Just anything to like get a ton of plumpness and hydration back to your skin, you know? But anyways, I feel like I could probably talk about this forever in a day because it's bringing me so much happiness. But let's get on with our day. I need to finish getting ready, do my hair, get dressed, put on a little bit of makeup. Let me put my ring back on and let's do this. <laughs> sitting here working <laughs> it's Thursday I don't even know if I said that before but while I was sitting here I realized I forgot I have these in the refrigerator we got them from Costco and it came in like I don't remember like a 10 pack or something like that but these immunity daily shots oh I'm sorry are you wanting me to throw your toy is that what's happening here <laughs> it's something that Juan and I just learned over the weekend is that Costco is on Instacart. Like what game changer. So we ordered a bunch so that we didn't have to go into Costco, which was kind of great. But I haven't had one of these in so long. These used to be my jam. I don't even remember if this was like the flavor I had. I don't recall anything, <laughs> but I'm so excited about this. So let's take it. Apple juice, pineapple juice, coconut water, ginger, turmeric orange juice, lemon juice. There's a few extra ingredients, but it sounds pretty similar to when I like make my own immunity shots. Do you guys remember when I used to do that all the time? Maybe I should just like bring that back and do it that way. Hmm. These taste very similar to the ones I make. Mine is like four ingredients. <laughs> I mean, I like the taste of it. So I'm obviously just sipping it, but you can chug it if you really want to. I don't I don't I'm not gonna stay down here for long I because don't see a way we know my feelings about this one being super loud. But I wanted to be with my baby. Okay, so it is my lunch hour and I'm not quite feeling like super hungry right this second. Plus I can probably just like eat and work at the same time. But what I really wanted to do right now was do my nails. I had on the last set for like two and a half weeks and then I just took them off and I've been living like this for two to three days now. But it's time for my next set. 
But before I can get to that, what I wanted to do was try on every single pair of jeans that I own. It's been a year since I've done this last and there's like half of these that I don't even really wear and gravitate towards all that much. So I want to see if I can like part with a couple of pairs. Jeans are just like sweatsuits to me. It's a thing that I love. It's a thing that I kind of like hoard and it's hard for me to like get rid of jeans because it's so hard to find ones that fit so well. So like once I have them, I just want to keep them. But <laughs> I'm sitting here laughing at myself because you know, like this is going to be quite the undertaking right now. I didn't realize how many pairs of jeans that I own. I'm looking at my bed right now because I just grabbed every single pair of jeans from my closet put it on the bed and kind of like put it into some sort of like wash category here. Um, yeah, I have like almost 30 pairs of jeans. How did that happen? <gasps> it's insane. Okay, so here's all of the pairs of jeans that we're about to try on right now. I tried to put them in like wash categories here and then we're just gonna go category by category so that I know like maybe out of say these five black pairs of jeans, I really only like two of them. Like there's no need to keep all five of them. Well, we'll see because we all know I'm gonna start to make justifications when I start the try on process. But I mean, I have good intentions, so I don't, it's fine, whatever it ends up being. But yeah, I just really badly wanna go through all of these and maybe even like rediscover like a new favorite pair that I can wear that I haven't worn in a while. Sorry for the mess, Juan's laundry is behind all of the jeans. So let's get going. We have no time to waste. This is gonna take a while, but I'm gonna try to be fast about it. At the same time, like both like trying on, but then like talking about it. Um, I think more than anything, it's just like a nice visual, but maybe you guys can help me too with like the ones that I'm struggling to get rid of. You guys tell me which ones are like your least favorite. And you're like, girl, you need to get rid of this sort of a situation, you know? <laughs> I also realized I'm doing it in my bedroom here, but I don't have like a full body mirror. So I'm gonna be going between here and my office to like look at the jeans. Anyway, let's do it. Okay, first pair, this is a new pair. I showed in my Aritzia haul video. I did end up getting it hemmed and then I also had the waist taken in like a little bit, but this is like a recent new pair and I got it hemmed to wear with like booties. So that's why they're still like pretty long, but I absolutely love this pair. It's more like on the wide leg baggy side while still being like fitted through the waist. So these are definitely still keepers. Going a little out of order for a second because these are the exact same pair of jeans as the black ones. So after that haul video that I did, I realized how much I love the jeans. So then I also got it in this wash, which is so pretty. So I did the exact same thing to these ones where I got the waist taken in and I got them hemmed up to wear with booties. But I just really love this style. I think it's really flattering. <laughs> to be honest, I used to love these jeans and I wore them all the time. They're the 90s pinched waist from a Goldie. But as you can see, I've actually gained a little bit of weight. <laughs> Winter, you know, hibernation. I don't know. Yeah, these are very tight. I can't get these two buttons buttoned. I mean, I'm sure I could if I like really stuck it in. But I mean... I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep them till the summertime and see like how I still feel about them. But I have this style and like the lighter washes and then let's still try on the rest of the dark washes because maybe I'll just end up being like, nah, this one's gotta go. So I think these ones are the Goldie Riley. I really liked how distressed they are, but I don't, I don't know if I've, but I mean, I haven't really been wearing distressed jeans all that much. You can see that these are kind of like an ankle length on me, great for booties and sneakers. I'm trying to see, no, this is the one. Okay, this I think is a maybe. Guys, I remember when these used to be like really loose. That's really funny. Perhaps I'll hang on to them. This is kind of like the new version of skinny jeans <laughs> in my mind, but I mean, they fit really well and snug. So put it in the maybe pile. So these ones I absolutely love. This is like the barrel leg. I got them last year. I've been still seeing so many pairs of jeans and pants with the barrel leg. And these are just so comfortable. Like they're super high rise. They fit throughout the waist, but like everywhere else is so loose and so comfy. I love them. It has a raw hem to it. So I could just like cut it a little bit, but I've mostly been wearing these with like booties or like heels and stuff. And I kind of like the length of them, but I've been thinking about it lately about just taking a pair of scissors to it. So this is definitely still a yes. This pair I've never worn. It's a really dark pair of denim. 
It's from Girlfriend Denim, but it has kind of like, I'm trying to fix the pocket. It has kind of like that trouser look to them. I got them hemmed and everything with good intentions to obviously wear them. But like, it's like a bell bottom. It's super wide leg. I feel like it feels kind of weird like throughout here and stuff. So I'm kind of thinking that these are a no. Confirmed, not obsessed with them. I'll put them in the no pile. Let's go white now because why not? So these are also a Goldie 90s pinch waist, but as you can see, it's kind of funny how some of them differ like depending on the washes, but this one fits really well still. I also like that it's not like a stark white. Like this is a stark white pair of jeans. It's more of like a cream off-white. I love these pair. I love them so much. So I'm definitely keeping these. The same barrel leg jean in white. So these are obviously a keep. These are maybe. These I need your guys' help with. So they're girlfriend denim, the Bella style, which I have a few other washes in this style. I got them hemmed. The waist is still big. I didn't do anything there, but these are more of like the low rise denim. Let me adjust the camera so that I can step a little closer for you guys. So I don't know. Tell me your thoughts on this one. So speaking of the girlfriend Bella, this is the pair that I wear literally all of the time. Can't quite get it right. There, I think that's better of an angle. Hands down, one of my favorite pairs, but it's so weird like just having the white ones on and then having these. I just like the fit of these ones so much more. This is the Ritzia Fair Jean. This is obviously a keeper. Another solid option and one that has been a go-to of mine for like what, the last couple of years, the 90s pinch waist from a Goldie. I still really like these. These are definitely a keep. Although these are very prone to this kind of like popping off. I have another just like this. I'm just too lazy to go get it fixed. <laughs> Okay, so my only cargo jean pair, this is from Aritzia. I really like the wash on this one as well. It looks really good like with Converse and stuff, surprisingly. Kind of has the trouser look with like these pockets. But I think they're still cute and they still work. I think it's still a yes. This is my number one pair of jeans that I've been wearing the most lately for like the last couple of months. This is also the Aritzia Fera jeans so just in a lighter wash than the other one, but like so flattering so perfect I only had to get it hemmed up and I got it hemmed to wear with booties but like the waist is just perfect as is I love this pair before that Aritzia pair was my go-to these were my go-to this is the Goldie 90s pinched waist love the wash on these and the fact that they're not distressed at all more of like a straight leg but still really flattering you can see here it had like the same issue as the other one but I like Pinned it with a safety pin. I think that this is still a great pair of jeans, so I'm keeping it. Oh no, guys. Okay, so this is one of the a Goldie Riley pairs. Love like the wash of these. It's so pretty. It's more like a, a Goldie like stiffer jean though, but it doesn't look like they fit these anymore, so they gotta go. I'm telling you, I had a moment with 90s pinch waist. I have them in so many washes. So this is another pair, a little bit deeper than the last. This one I got the waist taken in, but it's so tight at the waist. I kind of um, regret doing that. <laughs> it kind of like, can you see? It makes me bulge a little bit. So I think I messed up on these. I haven't really worn them because they've been too tight in the waist. Dang. I think that this is my lightest pair of denim. It's from the brand Redone. I got another pair that I got him to wear like with booties because I wear booties a ton, guys. This one sits, I guess like more mid-rise. Like yeah, it's high rise, but it's not like an ultra high rise. A little bit of a wide leg. I think it looks really nice, but I feel like I'm kind of over them. So I'll put these in the maybe pile for you guys to let me know what you think. Okay, so these ones are Shop Alley Grace. They're custom jeans. So they were made for my like exact measurements. And I of course love these. I like the little bit of distressing. I'm thinking about ordering another one. I like a medium wash with no distressing. But I love these so much. These ones I feel like are very similar to those custom Levi's jeans. Like the fit is pretty similar. The wash is pretty similar as well. But these you just buy as is and it's obviously a lot cheaper too this is a really really good pair of jeans love love another barrel leg one i only had three guys this is the last one i promise this wash is everything do you just see how gorgeous it is it's like that perfect blue i love it like i said they sit really high rise the butt maybe looks like a little weird but like i just love 
These are so comfy. Okay, I love these. I haven't worn these in a while, but dang, why haven't I? I like these more than the redone ones. Fits really high rise, nice around the waist. Feels good around the butt as well. And I like the wide leg. These remind me of um, also my favorite like um, Aritzia ones at the moment too. These are keepers. Ah! You guys, I totally forgot that I had these. These are also the Aritzia Farragene and an even lighter wash than the other two that I have. These ones I didn't get hemmed up at all, but you can see that it fits really well around the waist. I think I completely forgot about these and just put them in my closet. So I might have to go get them hemmed, but these fit, weirdly enough, a lot tighter than the other ones. I might just need to like stretch them out <laughs> a bit. Okay, these ones are Citizens of Humanity and by far like the most lightweight pair of jeans that I have. They feel super cozy, not necessarily stretchy, but it definitely has like room in it. It's a light color wash. I really like these a lot. I got them hemmed, I think to wear baggy with just sneakers, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to put shoes on and see, but nonetheless, I think that these are keepers. Okay, well, it's been a minute since I've worn these, probably since like last summer. Girlfriend Bella jeans, so they're supposed to be like a little bit lower rise. I think I like these more than the white ones, for sure. Not more than the dark wash ones that I have, but what do we think about like all of this distressing on the sides? More of like a casual jean to keep. The wash is nice, it's very light. Maybe put it in the maybe pile. Let me know what you guys think. I don't feel like I ever want to get rid of this pair of jeans. This is like one of my favorite, favorite washes from the Goldie Rileys. So I think we're down to me only keeping like two Rileys now. That is so weird. I never thought I would see the day. But I love the wash on this one and like the simple distressing on it. But I just love the way it fits around the bum. Again, I feel like this is like the new skinny jean in a sense. Ankle, leg, but yeah, I still like them enough that I'm keeping them. You guys, I am sweating. I'm sweating up a storm. Okay, we made it to the last pair of jeans. So this is the Goldie Baggy Denim. This, for sure, I wear it with like little kitten heels. It's so cute, but like super baggy. Oh, these are so good. Here, so we can see what it looks like with a little kitten heel, like with heels and a little bagginess to it. I get so many compliments on these jeans. These are beautiful and again, are really, really pretty wash too. So it's like a little loose, but still fitted throughout the waist. Baggy right, baggy all throughout. I just love this vibe and this trend. Let's see where that left us. Bring you closer. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four pairs of nose. So one pair that was too tight, one of the Riley pairs that doesn't fit. This dark wash, like trouser pair that was really wide leg. And then this black pair that I couldn't even get buttoned. So we're gonna part with those. And then these are the maybes that I need your help with. So the girlfriend denim ones with like super distressy throughout, baggy, loose sort of a vibe. The redone jeans that are a really light wash, pretty fitted throughout with a little bit of like a wide leg to them. This white pair, which I feel like I'm already leaning towards just putting it in the no pile, but I'll leave it in this category. And then this Riley pair that had some distressing, but it fits, dark wash. Tell me what you think. <sighs> that was fun. I don't know how much of these jeans are still available or not. So I have a little bit of a challenge and a task ahead of me because I of course want to try to link all of these jeans for you. So I'm telling you now, I'm gonna do my best. Look down in the description if you want links for all of these, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's go eat. The dishwasher is going behind you. So apologies if you can hear it. So. I have been prepping my nails. When I took off the last set, I pretty much did most of like the prepping and like cleaning up my cuticles. But since it's been a few days, I'm just like retouching up and making sure that they look good. So a few of you guys had questions about like what the quality of your nails look like after like you remove the press on nails. It's not bad at all. Like, yes, you can see like, it's not like they were never on. You know what I mean? It's scuffed up a little bit. And most of that is due to what I'm about to do right now, which is rough up the top of every single one of the nails, like a little bit. That just helps the nail to stay on longer, adding like some texture to it. You also want your nails to be really dry, really like dehydrated in a sense, because any sort of like oils or like moisturizer or anything like that will only make it so that the glue doesn't 
stick and hold as long. So you don't need to do like a ton of roughing up. I don't anyways, but I don't know, just a little bit. So the set I'm gonna be putting on, I finally got like my custom set from Perfectly Pressed. So this is like sizes that I've picked out. I picked out in a, a vlog or two ago with you guys. They finally came. It took a few weeks because they're custom made like when you order them. But these are supposed to be like higher quality gel, nails, and all like that sort of stuff. So I'm really excited to try them out. I'm also using a new glue as well from Marikette. We'll go with it. So I got two different ones. Both are like glazed. The top ones, I think I wanna save for March. Um, so I think I'm gonna try out like these bottom ones. They, <laughs> they look a little bit different than I thought that they were gonna be, but I think they're still really pretty nonetheless. So take an alcohol wipe here. I'm kind of gonna go back and forth, starting with my pinkies and then move it the way in, I guess. So I also got a nail prep dehydrator. This really helps to suck all the moisture out and dehydrate. It's similar to the alcohol pad, to be honest. So it may be like unnecessary, but I mean, I have it, so I'm gonna use it. And then for glue, what I do is I put it on the back of the nail and then I put a single dot on my nail in the center. And that has been perfect. I'm telling you, the nails are only lasting two and a half weeks. It's because I'm taking them off and then they don't necessarily like pop off super easily still. So it could probably stay like so much longer. But like I said, I'm trying a new glue out. I've heard really good things about this one. So we're gonna go with it. Okay, I'm excited. You guys, I'm totally into this. I just think it's the best. Like I don't have to waste so many hours in a nail salon. It's not like super damaging to my nails and it's just like all on my own terms and like super flexible. It's also more affordable. I don't know, I love it. It looks just like salon quality. pretty. I'm just holding this one a little bit longer. It dries down really, really quickly. So there we have it. Kind of like a glazed donut, but more of like a gold champagne-y sort of color. It's really pretty. Not something that I would typically go for, but tell me why guys. There's always one nail where the glue comes over the edge and then the glue is just kind of like <laughs> there and I can't get it off. Be careful not to overdo the glue or else that situation is gonna happen but yay that was easy enough took like 20 minutes so now it's usually better to apply the nails at night than during the day because you want to go a minimum of like one or two hours without getting your hands wet so shower washing your hands anything like that and they recommend at night because you're obviously going about like seven, eight hours without any water exposed to it at all, which is even better than a couple of hours naturally. So I've already done everything that I need to do. The dishes are going, took a shower today, all that good stuff. So I am good to go until at least tonight when I need to do like my skincare and stuff. I have all of like my nail stuff and like this little thing right here.
going to be a big matcha. Okay, so I have been using this Nekohama matcha again. You know, to be fair, I didn't give it a fair shake. I tried it once and then I judged it based off of like that one time. It was like really grainy. And in reality, I just don't think I strained it. I don't remember what I did. But I gave it a shot again, like what, a week and a half ago. And I was like, okay, wow, this is like one of the best matchas that I've ever had. It's so good. <laughs> so we're using it again. Let's see if this is enough. I really want a big matcha. So of course it takes a matcha. Let's see if this is a good ratio here. Put over my mixture already. So I have the super basic Oatly that I've still been obsessed with. Cinnamon and honey in here already. Let's pour this in. Perfect. I went ahead and changed my bottoms because, I don't know, I guess I felt like it. Great. Okay, let's give this a good mix. This is like my favorite part. See how it tastes. I think I'm gonna like chill for a minute. I'm not exactly done with work, but I wanna take a little break. I might watch like 10, 15 minutes of like a show or something like that while drinking this. Just trying to be more mindful of taking breaks, stretching, taking breaths, mindfulness, that sort of thing, because I am just so bad at sitting at my computer and not moving to even go to the bathroom for like five hours. So I'm trying to be more mindful of that and like schedule breaks for myself. So this is a break. I'm gonna probably grab like a little bit of a snack too, cause I'm hungry. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. We need one to try this. You just have all of the animals over here? <laughs> you know you have Oliver at your feet. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 no fighting. Hey, guys. Babe, I wanted you to try my matcha because it's so good. I'll stay a little bit far away though so that we can't see what's on your screen since you're working. Isn't it so good? Oh, babe. What's mine? No. No what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, this is my good matcha. I can't have you using my good matcha. I don't share. Where are you going? Where are you going? Baby, 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 baby. <laughs> Babe, put the in the harness. Harness? Say hi. Say hi. I'm almost six months old and my mom has no idea where time has gone. What's life? She is the cutest. The cutest dog in the entire world. Hi. What do you think? What do you think? Juan's about to take her for a hike. Actually, not just a walk, but a little hike. Whenever he does a hike or a walk, they're gone for like an hour. I'm gonna stay here though. <laughs> Let's put this on you. Let's put on your harness. Her other one, she was like afraid of it. She ran away, but as you can see, she's not running away from this one. So that's good news. We couldn't have that, no, could we? Could probably tighten up the neck though. Okay, bye. I think it's so funny the amount of times that I show her, I don't feel like I've given any solid updates on her in like a hot minute. So Gray's doing really well. She is developing and progressing really, really well. She went through the phase where all of her puppy teeth were falling out and her adult teeth were coming in and we're finding puppy teeth everywhere. So we started to collect and save all of the puppy teeth. That phase is over. She officially has all of like her adult teeth in and she's eating so much better. I feel like it's because she has her adult teeth. Like she can truly eat and chew the kibble. Um, so that's good. What other main updates, babe? She does. She is listening so much more. She is so smart. And she is training really well, picking things up. Um, She's really spoiled. She is really spoiled. Huh. Both my therapist and the trainer says that I should probably leave her <laughs> throughout the day. Not necessarily like leave the house, but like 
maybe I'm upstairs and she's down here so that she's not too spoiled because she's a little spoiled. Part of that is because I don't want to be away from her, but then the other part is, is that I have guilt of leaving her alone too. So it's something I need to work on and it's for my own mental health too, so that I can get things done because she's allowed to go upstairs with us, not unsupervised. Cause we still want it to be like Oliver's little area. But what I'm trying to get at is that I'm still working like down here and my office is upstairs. So it's still adding some complexity to my week and to my ability to get things done, stay motivated. Yeah, it's impacting my mental health a bit. So we're slowly starting to get back to what life was before Gray. Like obviously a modified better version, but as far as like how I structure my day and feeling like I can still accomplish the same amount of stuff that I did prior to her, I feel like that's getting better. And it's also just getting better with her um, getting older as well and learning, training, and doing all that sort of stuff. Her training classes are almost over. She only has three more weeks, but uh, we've already been talking with the trainer about the other courses and classes that they offer. We eventually want to get her into agility, like doing like the running around and all like the courses and stuff because Man, she's fast and these type of dogs need to be active. And I think having something like that, like once a week would be so amazingly brilliant for her on top of everything else that we do for her. But like those sort of classes, like wear her out. Like she just comes back and like passes out. Like she immediately passes out in the car on the way back home too. I just love it for her. And then she gets the socialization with other dogs and all that sort of stuff. So anyways, agility maybe down the road because there's a couple other classes that she would need to take beforehand because that one's kind of like more advanced and it's more for like adult dogs and she's not even six months old yet i can't believe that that's coming up i feel like i need to have like a little half year birthday party or something for her <laughs> so anyways there's a little gray update for you guys the light of my life second to oliver <laughs> and oliver is doing really well he is coming downstairs more and more and even just like this last week both of them were able to be on the couch and like take naps at the same time oliver was like over on this chair taking a nap while gray was running around there's still some issues with like him provoking her or her provoking him sort of a thing that we still need to work on. I don't think it's ever going to be like perfect, but the thing is, is that like Oliver has never caused any harm to Gray and Gray has never caused any harm to Oliver. So that's all I could ask for, but um, yes, improvements. So we like that. We like that. We like that a lot. I think I'm going to read here shortly now that they're out of the house. But I think I'm going to finish this episode of Vanderpump Rules. I'm still reading Iron Flame, which is the second book in the series of Fourth Wing, which by the way, I feel like I'm just like on a talking rant at the moment. <laughs> I feel like that might be my favorite book that I've ever read. Like I love everything about it and I wasn't even done with Fourth Wing and I was like dreading being done with Iron Flame and then there like not being another book available to read. And I haven't even looked it up because I don't want any spoilers. I don't even know if there's a third book in the works because I mean Iron Flame just came fall of last year so I still have to wait a long time. Anyways, I am already having like withdrawals from this book and it might be like the worst book hangover that I'm about to face that I've ever experienced. I get like this feeling in my heart like about these books that, that it just like like warms it so much and then like when I'm without it like I feel slightly empty it's such a weird feeling that I haven't quite experienced this with any other book that I've ever read so yeah I feel like this is my favorite book series that I've ever read thus far I highly recommend it if you guys haven't read it but I know so many of you guys have you guys have been recommending it to me for months and I'm always like yes yes it's to be read next so I am so glad that I finally read them well almost both of them before like continuing it back into Sarah J Moss books because man holy hell they are so 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 good so i'm gonna continue reading iron flame and i feel like i'm dragging my feet a little bit with the last 200 pages because like i said i really don't want it to be over it needs to be done i need to move on to the next books oh mm -hmm.